yeah, man, I'm just terrified of maladjusted people, and I'm really glad you know, at this park we haven't ran into any. Oh, sh a Yakuza fan. Ah! Oh my god, what's he doing? I'm so scared right now! Alright, bro, we have to fight him. What? Why? He won't listen to reason. Come on, let's go. Quick question, did that intro skit give you secondhand embarrassment? If so, then good. Hi, I'm a Yakuza fan. If you don't think I'm batshit insane, then I'm doing something wrong. And yes, that is how I pronounce Yakuza. Uh, I don't care how you say it, get used to it. For those on the outside looking in, which if the number of times that this exact tweet is popped off as any indication is way too many of you, um, the Yakuza games, and especially the community, might seem overwhelming, but don't worry, that's what I'm here for. Yakuza games are story-rich, kind of open-world brawlers that focus on the criminal underworld of Japan in some form or another. Their crazy tonal dissonance allows them to elicit every possible emotion out of the player. Joy, sadness, anger, laughter, complete confusion, you name it, it's here. And being a part of the fanbase? Well, that's an entirely different beast. I would know I'm one of them. Here's a list of the games I finished, just in case you're curious. I'm sure the algorithm would love it if I I ramped this crash course on the community up by talking about the different eras of the fandom and like giving you guys some more context before all the introspective stuff I'm gonna be saying later on. Uh, but nah, let's just jump right into brain rot territory. Merry fucking Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna know what Yakuza is even about? It's this. I'm so sorry. Kazuma Kiryu is the main character of the majority of these games. He is a human tank, a monster. He fights tigers, he dodges rockets, and then beats up a hundred guys at the same time. He does this. Oh my oh, it's god. The gift. It's the gift. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> but despite all of that, he is still human. So no matter which way you spin it, a character like Kratos, a demigod who has claimed the title of god by slaying like 30 gods, is just out of reach for him. Or at least he would be if not for the Tiger Drop. The Tiger Drop is Kiryu's most iconic move that he has to either train or level up to receive in every Yakuza game. It's a counter. You hold R1 and then press triangle right before the enemy is about to hit you. It is insanely powerful. It is so fun to use. And most importantly, it negates all damage from only the attack that it's countering, but let's not talk about that. So Kratos or Master Chief or Jesus Christ can throw out whatever they want, but they're not getting past Kiryu as long as he keeps Tiger dropping. Now, I don't want to take credit for this bulletproof strategy. I am sadly nowhere near smart enough to come up with something like this. The honor goes to local crackhead. Sick name, dude. For on January 3rd, 2023, the Yakuza community was changed forever by this tweet. Kratos is a little god versus some guy that is a yakuza nah kiryu gets bodied easily tiger drop negates any damage so if kiryu keeps tiger dropping he can't take damage from kratos uh, i feel kratos with spartan rage would still tiger drop negates any damage so you're saying a guy that can negate damage wins against the guy that literally two series worth of gods and is immortal tiger drop negates any damage. Power scaling is dead forever in this fandom and I couldn't be happier. <laughs> I also love how communal and inviting it is, which I know is a weird thing to say about a meme, but bear with me here. Like, I found a thread on the God of War Ragnarok subreddit where someone reposted the tweets, and then everyone was just getting in on the joke and having fun with it. Some are bringing their own favorite characters into the mix, and it's just nice, you know? Like, it's pleasant to read. Everyone understands that Kratos would mix Kiryu with one love tap. It's all just in good fun. God of War fanboy here. But Kiryu, 
and any negativity was swiftly dealt with through a verbal tiger drop. Power scaling is for nerds, real ones focus on shit that isn't a complete waste of time. Exactly, like how tiger drop negates all damage. I don't know, I just love it when everyone is able to laugh at the same stupid joke in unison. It's also worth noting that this Twitter thread is tied to another exceptional meme that you might have heard of before, the I'm not going to sugarcoat it one. This started in the Tekken community with this absolutely disgusting Tekken 7 video of Kazuya doing a full health combo. Every time he hits an electric wind god fist, you get hit in real life with a vine boom, that damn sound bite, and this picture. You know, I think this would be super applicable to a ton of other games that have crazy moves that just clean house if executed properly. I wonder if Yakuza has any of those. Before we move on, here's a really cool piece of art I found from Subakai. Sorry if I said that wrong, but um, this is really cool and I thought it was relevant and I would get this framed on my wall. Now that meme was nice, it was funny, it had some sensory overload, but it's not full on brain rot territory. This next one, however, this was an epidemic. See, one thing I noticed about niche and super passionate fandoms is they will do anything and everything to get people into their favorite series. I'm sure you remember how JoJo fans were around 2017 and 2018 and how Persona fans were in 2019. Just overwhelming, annoying, cringe if you will. Until a counterculture rose up against them and then in a few months things would settle down to a new equilibrium. I feel like the Yakuza fandom is on the cusp of annoying the mainstream, but but I think the way that they are going about it is by far the funniest method possible. See, we have embraced being annoying. A few years ago, when JoJo fans were saying that everything is a JoJo's reference, it got mocked relentlessly until it became the most uncool thing to say unironically. So how do Yakuza fans avoid falling into this trap? They don't. They just plow right through it with a bunch of low quality PNGs. <laughs> God help anybody who posted something on the internet over the last few months with words that had any passing resemblance to the phrase like a dragon or the name Ichiban. Oh, what's that? This lizard looks like a dragon to you? Cool, here's thousands of Yakuza 6 promotional images, the box art for like a dragon, and this fuck-ass render of Ichiban. Nobody was safe, and I mean nobody. What's harder than this? Dang, I don't know, dude. That looks really hard. Let's take a look at the quote retweets and see what they're saying. Uh, having to deal with itchy balls. Oh, fuck. No, why'd you have to say it like that? You did! I am full! Yakuza fans have been calling Ichiban nicknames like Itchy Bum and Itchy Balls since Like a Dragon came out in 2020, so I guess I shouldn't be too surprised that this trend caught on. And when RGG, the developers behind the Yakuza games, got in on it too, it was all over. Sadly, the Like a What epidemic has seemingly come to a close as of writing. But I just want to say it was so surreal to see this thing I've had a niche interest in for over a year go viral every week because three words set off the hive mind. Speaking of which, I've been thinking about that lately, the fact that every Yakuza fan shares the same brain cell. There's this fantastic video by Snowiest Angman, Angie, Ang, I'm just gonna call him Snowy, where he goes over a list of things that every Yakuza player has done at least once. Not stuff like watching cutscenes or pressing the punch button, no. Things you have to go out of your way to do, like walking into every sign and bicycle in the Dragon Engine games, because the physics are just too funny. Also, I have this magical thing to show you. Go, go to the park. <laughs> <laughs> or standing around for minutes at a time letting someone kick your teeth in because you just can't seem to tiger drop them. There we go. Skipping cutscenes, but not important story-related ones, that's a sin. And the two that I felt insanely called out by. Constantly failing to pick up a weapon because... Look, it's way harder than it looks. You have to, like, come to a full stop in order to grab something. And spinning the camera around when you can't move because I have ADHD and if I don't do this, I will explode. I can add a few too, like how we all refuse to learn how to play Mahjong. Or how we're constantly screaming about how the selfish deed is not freedom. Or how we all laugh whenever Kiryu straight up kills somebody and then nobody cares. Well, what? <laughs> 
Kiri, you know. <laughs> Kiri, you. By the way, please subscribe to Snowy. He's by far my favorite Yakuza YouTuber. Super informative, super funny, dry delivery. Please go check him out. Back to hive mind mentality, I feel like these shared experiences only serve to strengthen the community's ties and allow them to freely engage in things like the like a what meme. Terrorizing innocent bystanders all while Yakuza 4 funny blares in the background. I know a lot of strong communities are like that and I think that's super cool because all of the Yakuza fans that I've talked to are really passionate about these games and extremely excited to share everything they love about them with you. But if you only ever see them on Twitter, I guess you would never know that, huh? You know, for a series with such an inherently fun premise, that being one guy beats up a thousand other guys at once. I sent 200 men after one guy. And the first one to claim his head gets $10,000. <laughs> People sure do complain about it a lot, huh? When talking about the community as a whole, we can't just talk about the goofy, funny memes. We gotta talk about the bad stuff too, which I think is just as interesting. So stick around. There's a program of participating in our company agreed to clean up trash. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did, did we do something wrong? <laughs> why, can't, why can't they just do it out of the goodness of their heart? So before I made the best decision of my life and deleted Twitter from my phone, it seemed like twice a month I'd see this take pop off whenever somebody complained about something they didn't like in the Yakuza games. Talking about how fans are gaslighting themselves into believing that the games are much worse than they actually are because they're competing with other 10 out of 10 games. Now, speaking to someone who is actually actually played these games, I think this is insane. The Yakuza games are fun, creative, emotional, wild rides that are always a joy to go on. But my guy, they are still man-made products with horrible, horrible flaws. What those are will vary from person to person, but my biggest gripe with the games is how much fluff there is in all of them. They do not respect your free time and will try to squeeze as many hours as possible out of you. Forcing you to run everywhere on the map, especially with the is a 5 in judgment and counter rates. Little things like buying something from the store are needlessly cumbersome and everything has these canned animations. Plus some games like Kiwami 2 have entire chapters that could just be deleted with no consequence. As someone who's been on and off marathoning these games over the last year and a half, all these bloated playtimes contribute heavily to burnout and I can say all of that while still loving these games. So can the people who hate the Dragon Engine combat process prior to Lost Judgment, so can the people who complain about the blocking in Yakuza 3, the constant reuse of assets, the Majima Everywhere system in Kiwami, how horrible the pool physics are in 5, and apparently they're even worse in the previous games, Jesus Christ, and lest we forget the abundance of technical hiccups that are admittedly really funny, and I know this because I clip every single one that happens to me. What? D dude. <laughs> The fucking balls punch attack. Ah! <laughs> what happened to him? Oh my god, his face! I... Um, he, wait. But dog, none of that bad stuff is taken away from the fact that Yakuza 0 still makes me cry to this day. From the fact that Shinada's section in 5 is one of the greatest parts of any game I've ever played. From the fact that these games are endlessly charming and always make me smile. And while I'd like to end things here to view takes like this in a vacuum and just dismiss them entirely, I can't because it's more complicated than that. See, one thing I've noticed while talking to Yakuza fans and also reading what people People have to say about them is there seems to be this air of negativity that surrounds this generally positive and very accepting community. I thought about why this was the case because I don't know I just find this shit interesting and came to the conclusion that the diversity of these games is a huge contributor to this. Think back to all of the potential pain points I just listed. Basically all of them were specific to one or a small handful of games because while these games look incredibly similar and use a lot of the same assets 
sets, each one is wildly different and a unique experience through and through. There are a million features in these games, both large and small, that change drastically from title to title. Story, level ups, mini games, side quests, localization, maps, characters, music, gameplay. Like dude, I've seen friends swear that the Yakuza 4 version of Akiyama is a million times better and more fun to play than his Yakuza 5 incarnation and vice versa. And with like 13 easily accessible games in the series, Yakuza fans are spoiled for choice, which can create divides within the community. I remember seeing it happen to Call of Duty in the mid-2010s with advanced movement. Some people loved it, some hated it, so on one side you had people saying that exosuits had no place in this game series and that they had to go or else the games would all suck. Then on the other hand, newer fans were like the future is now old man and it just wasn't pleasant. People will say nice things about the games they love, sure, but unfortunately the negativity bias is real. And that air of pessimism will create countercultures that pump out takes like this. Plus I think the turn-based Yakuza games like A Dragon and Infinite Wealth have only exasperated this issue. Because now it's not just dang I really missed the level up system from the last game, it's dude what the actual fuck is on my screen right now? And I've noticed myself being overly critical of these games before. Getting frustrated when the games couldn't recreate the highest highs I'd experienced previously. But that's life. Not everything can be as majestic as a conversation with Kurokawa and Kiwami 2. I got pictures of you balls deep in some chick who ain't exactly your wife? Oh, you think that's funny? How funny is it gonna be if my finger slips and hits send? Oh no! And it's difficult to be too hard on this community. Because honestly, aside from a few hiccups here and there, we keep ourselves way cleaner than most other fandoms, you know. No, 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 yeah, no yeah, real I, mainstream I, I drama, okay. none of that. It's, uh... Yeah, okay, we can talk about this. What is up with these jabroni ass celebrities and streamers trying to see Kamurocho? I'm sure you heard, but leading up to the release of the newest game in the series, Infinite Wealth, Sega chose to pay XQC to stream the intro of the game and drum up some hype. What do you think happened? I'm not interested in talking about the what here a thousand articles that released day and date with the exact same Twitter screenshots already drove this quote unquote drama into the ground. The why is actually the good stuff, so let me put my judge eyes back in and we can <laughs> fucking figure this out. I can't use that. <laughs> I think this big blow up is emblematic of two things. The first is how much people hate XQC. I respect it. The second is something that I've seen a lot of niche communities struggle with, the push to enter the mainstream. The knee-jerk reaction I see all the time when old fans aren't exactly comfortable with these new audience acquisitions is what are you stupid, don't you want a bunch of people playing? And you know, a lot of the beginning of this video was actually spent talking about how Yakuza fans will share their love of these games with anyone and everyone in the hopes that they'll come play. So it makes sense if someone sees the decision taste for these advertising campaigns as hypocritical, uh, but that's also a pretty close-minded way of looking at things. Sega wanted to appeal to a larger demographic, so they roped in streamers who have nothing to do with the series in order to capture a larger audience. They hired celebrities I've never heard of before to do ads and TV spots. They made dubs and hired YouTubers to do the voice work, maybe because that would drum up some press. Yup, that worked. Crispin Freeman is one of the best dub voice actors of all time, but nobody cares that he was in judgment. On the other hand, I'd put money down that anyone who knows what infinite wealth is knows who dubbed Kiryu. And whether or not you agree or disagree with the strategy, it worked. Infinite Wealth has sold exponentially faster than any other game in the series, even surprising Yokoyama himself. You got what you wanted, the series is growing, but the trade-off is this slew of uncomfortable changes that you think strayed from what made you fall in love with this stuff in the first place. This is normal, and I see it all the time. To use an example my dad would understand, do you remember when Taylor Swift started dating that Chiefs player that I don't even know the name of and it became the best thing that ever happened to the NFL? Super Bowl 58 had the largest recorded TV audience in US history, and dozens of brands are rolling in money from this surge in interest. But ask any football fan what they think about Taylor Swift and be prepared to watch a 50 year old man rupture his own fucking spleen. People do not like change, especially when it comes to 
something they're deeply involved in and passionate about. The exclusionary toxicity of this mindset is a whole other conversation that I do not want to have. I just wanted to say, I get it, you know? Call me biased towards the Yakuza community because I 100% am. I'm biased because of how accepting, friendly, funny, and charismatic so many members of this wonderful fandom are. That isn't the kind of stuff that'll generate headlines, but it is what'll keep people around. Wanting to play these games and connect with others who do too. I love it, and I feel like this last year has created a lot of newfound negativity that to my knowledge wasn't really there before. So I want this video to remind you guys that you're all human and hopefully give you a little bit of a taste of what made you so passionate about these games in the first place. I probably titled this video something along the lines of the Yakuza community is insane, but man that's just clickbait. It should really say that you guys are awesome, plain and simple. Thanks for being you, and I hope you're as excited about the future of this franchise as I am. Hey, it's me, the guy who thought he could look like a Yakuza so long as he put on a nice shirt. Uh, special thanks to Silent Secondary, Mr. Chocolate Salmon, and the rest of my wonderful patrons.